Hello everyone, I hope everybody is doing well and welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be doing my April roundup. Yes, it's that time once again. Where is the time going? I I couldn't tell you. And I just wanted to say I did leave out a couple products here just because I was only able to try them out once. So my initial thoughts have not changed. A few of the products that come to mind are the Say Blush, the Bobbi Brown foundation that Jamie got me, the Rare Beauty diffusing primer, and the e.l.f. mascara, and a few other things as well. I'm just going to push those products to next month's roundup so I can actually give them a good try. But before I get into it, because I know this video is going to be a lengthy one, I would love for you to subscribe if you aren't already. It means so much to me, and let's get to it. So of course I'm going to start off with my favorites of the month. This category is pretty much like a monthly favorites, if you will. So I'm gonna start off with my number one favorite product of the month, and that is the Fenty Beauty Ease Drops. I wasn't expecting to like this product as much as I actually did. This stuff is incredible. I wear the shade five, and this product here makes me so excited to do my makeup in the morning. This has been the foundation I've been reaching for the most. I wasn't expecting it to be as full coverage as it is, but I don't super mind that. It wears very thinly on the face, it's not heavy whatsoever, it's very undetectable, and it wears so well. It's just incredible, and it looks really, really good all throughout the day on my oily combo skin. I highly recommend this product. My favorite way to apply this is actually with my fingers. Yes, I kind of got over that weird thing I have, but it's phenomenal. I do find that it kind of applies weird with a brush. It doesn't apply as smoothly as with your fingers. It just like melts into your base so nicely that way. So that's the way I would recommend using it, but it's phenomenal. Love this stuff to bits. And I'm wearing the Fenty Ease Drops on my face right now, by the way. And underneath of that, I have this. This is the Super Goop Glow Screen, and I'm so happy Jamie picked this one up for me. I love how it's like a glow-giving primer, which you guys know I adore so much, but it protects me at the same time. Like, what more could I ask? When I first used it, it did pill, but the only reason why it pilled is because I layered it on top of another SPF from another brand, but I've never had any other issues like that ever since. This stuff is incredible. Um, as you can see, it just adds a really healthy glow to your base. It's not too Tin Man-ish or too oily looking or greasy. It's just perfection. I don't know what else to say other than I love it. And I know Jamie was really, really nervous to buy this product for me, but it's one of the products I've been using the most out of everything she purchased for me. So this is bomb. Another foundation that I brought into my collection this month was the MAC Studio Radiant Space and Body. I'm going to kind of compare it to the Fenty Beauty one in a bit, but this one's really, really nice as well. I find that it applies really nicely with a brush or your fingertips. I do get two different kind of effects. When I use it with a brush, it gives me more of like a Glossier skin tint vibe. And when I use it with my fingers, it kind of thickens up and it gives a nice unique texture. How they differentiate, this one has a lot less coverage and it's quite dewy, whereas this one has like a soft satin texture where it's still glowy, but a little bit matte at the same time. It's right in the middle there. And this one has a lot more coverage. So these two products both have a place in my collection. I see myself using both of them a ton. In this product, I use the shade N1. So I totally recommend this one as well. I can't compare it to its older version just because I never had that in my collection. I've only used it once during makeup school and that was only for a day, but on its own, I adore this stuff. Another one of my major favorites of this month was the Patrick Ta Cream Contour and Powder Bronzer Duo. I love this. I have both formulas on my face today. This stuff is mistake proof. It looks amazing layered on top of each other or using the cream alone or the bronzer alone. It looks phenomenal anytime you use it. I was a bit worried when I first got this because I didn't want it to look too much on my face. Sometimes when I contour and bronze at the same time, it's like a little too makeup-y for my vibe, but both of these products are quite sheer and they blend like crazy, so they don't look too much on the face, if that makes any sense. It's just the perfect formula and it lasts such a long time. I love how this bronzer formula is on the sheer side, so it builds really nicely, it diffuses beautifully. Same goes for the cream side. It kind of reminds me of a sheerer version of the Huda Beauty Tantour. I just adore this stuff. And the color of the actual product is perfect. I am looking at purchasing the lightest tone just to have it 
for the winter time. This has been the only bronzer and contour that I've been reaching for ever since it's blessed this space. <laughs> Next up, I have a cream highlighter here. This one's from MAC. It's the Pearl Cream Color Base. And I figured out why nobody talks about this anymore because this product is old as the hills. But it is so beautiful. I am wearing it on my cheeks today. I'll swatch it a bit here. It just gives such a natural looking highlight that even when I just swatched it here, there's no line of demarcation or there isn't an undercolor that is obvious. It just looks like a nice natural do that's not greasy looking. My hair doesn't get stuck into it at all. It's not so emollient. And once you blend it out, it almost like sets down in a way where it feels kind of powdery to the touch. You can't see any pearls or glitter in it at all. It's incredible. And I feel like we need to bring back the hype on this product. It's beautiful. Like I'm mesmerized at the glow it's giving in my monitor there. Stunning. Love it. I have no negatives to report on that one. It's perfection in my eyes. I have another highlighter here. This one's very, very intense if you want it to be. It's the Iconic London Illuminator. This one is very transformative because you can use it in so many different ways. I swatched it right here so you can see how much more intense it is compared to the MAC one. Uh, this is a full-on swatch just because I wanted to show how impactful it is. You can really blend it out to get it to a natural looking state or you can wear it like this if you're into the blinding highlight moment. You can also mix a touch into your foundation if you want it to be more glowy. I just love how summery it makes my makeup look whenever I use this. It's just simply gorgeous and you can use it with a variety of tools. I've used it with like my fingers, a brush or a sponge and it works beautifully with whatever you use to blend it out. I, I don't know, I just really, really like this. And I'm so happy I can get my hands on it now since it's more accessible. It's available on Sephora now. I remember when I was first starting off on Instagram, this was in every Instagram video and every post I felt like, but it was really hard for me to get it at the time. So I'm just so happy to have this in my collection, finally. <laughs> the next product here is the Josie Marin Vibrancy Argan Oil Full Coverage Concealer. I actually really, really love this. I find that it's a more high coverage version of the Kosas concealer. It wears really, really nicely. It doesn't look like it's too thick under your eyes. It wears very thinly, but it does have a lot of coverage. I'm so happy that Jamie picked this one up for me. I've been using it like crazy. Also, I think the packaging is fun. All of these colors and the colored wand, it just makes it a little bit more fun. I've been missing color this year. So this has been treating me good. Nothing wrong to report either. I feel like this is going to be a concealer that I put into my rotation. I have another one here that took me by surprise. This is the Brow Fix Clear Brow Gel from Charlotte Tilbury. At first I wasn't really sure, but then I started using it on an everyday basis on top of my M Cosmetics brow cream. I like this product if I want my brows to look more defined that day. It just kind of spikes them a little bit more. It doesn't give you like that laminated spiked brow effect at all. It just defines your brows even more and sets them. I have it in my brows right now and it doesn't feel crunchy at all. They just feel set in place. And I really like on the actual brush how you can see a lot of product on there because I found in the past with a lot of these types of brow gels, the stopper inside the bottle here like squeezes the bristles too much so there's like barely any product on the wand but with this one you can see a lot of the product and it actually applies to your brow really nicely so it's a quick experience and it sets your brows perfectly. Moving along here I have something I was not expecting to work for me at all and that is the Kosas 10 second eyeshadow. I have the shade Globe and honestly, I'm so happy that Jamie picked this up for me because this is a product I would have never tried on my own just because I wouldn't expect for this to work for my oily eyelids at all. Just because it's so liquidy, I don't know. It's just such a unique product. It's so interesting, but this stuff wears so well. It's so easy to work with. You can blend it out super easily and very quickly. The name of this product lives up and it also just wears incredibly. I've never had this product crease on me at all. It wears really nicely. It doesn't dry out your eyelid. The only thing is like when you're applying it, you have to make sure that it's like this on your desk. If it falls over, a bunch of it will spill out. So you just have to be careful with the placement of this. I just remembered something's in my oven. I gotta go check on it. I made baked oats and I haven't had a chance to take an actual bite yet, but I already got it on my sweater. So. 
Nope. I will not be sharing that recipe. I got it off TikTok and it's just, it tastes like nothing. Sad. Oh no, where did the 10 second eyeshadow go? My pocket. Okay, this stuff, incredible. I would like to see what other shades they have available because this is a bomb, 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 bomb product. And not only does this shadow look incredible on its own, it also layers on top of other shadows really nicely, powder or cream or whatever it may be. It just, it just works in all circumstances. It's great. One of Kosas's gems, that's for sure. Following up here, I have the e.l.f. Primer Infused Blush and Bronzer. I was a little bit iffy about these products at first because when you swatch them, there is like a like a creaminess to it in a sense that it, it just feels a little um, hydrated. I almost said moist. Well, I just said it anyways, but there's a moistness <laughs> in this product here, which with my experience with other products similar to this, they don't blend out that easily or nicely, but that isn't the case with these at all. They're very easy to build up and diffuse. They're not super, super pigmented, but they're hard to maneuver all over your face. They're just very effortless and easy to work with. And the colors are beautiful as well. This is my favorite blush I've been using. It's called Always Rosy. I'm wearing it on my cheeks right now. And the shade I've been using in the bronzing colors is Forever Sun Kissed. They're just great products. I see these being staples in my collection and I have been using these a ton this month and I don't see that changing anytime soon. These are for sure drugstore gems that feel high-end. These perform just as well or even better than a lot of products you can get at say Sephora. Next up, I brought in these. These are the Makeup by Mario eyeliners. I didn't think that these were going to be any different from other eyeliner pencils, but I was wrong. These are pretty much just shadows and stick form. You can use them in so many different ways and they work out flawlessly any way you use them. This is a special formula because it wears beautifully in the waterline, it doesn't smudge at all. And you can also smoke these out or you can create really sharp eyeliners with it. It's really nice to create those sharper liners because it's a super glidey formula. It doesn't tug at all, especially if you're working with a brush. Sometimes that can be a little tricky since it kind of dries on that brush quicker, but I don't experience that at all. You get a lot of playtime with these sticks. You get a lot of playtime with these liners. My favorite shade has been Soft Brown because I find that that one is a unique shade for an eyeliner. Here it is right here and I'll sheer it out too so you can see. It just blends and blends and blends and it's a beautiful warm color. It's so nice for every day. This has been the pencil I've been using to create my little everyday outer corner detail. I highly recommend them and he does have some funner colors as well. And on the other side of the pencil is this little brush that I actually use. I never use the brush that comes with products, but this one's actually nice when I want to smoke it out really quickly. It actually works. <laughs> so that's fun. I only had two bites of the baked oats and I have the sorest stomach ever right now. The next product is the Smashbox Be Legendary Line and Prime Pencil. I have the shade Medium Pink Rose. I do have a, a few other colors. This is just the one I pulled for this video. These are really, really nice, and they have like an in-between formula that creates not a super sharp lip line, nor does it create like a blurred lip line. It's right in the middle, so it just creates a soft pout, and I really, really like that. They're very glidey and smooth, and they also don't set right away, so you can diffuse the edges, so it's not so sharp around your lip line. They're very user-friendly, and you don't have to think about it when you're using this product, which I love very much. It just does what it's supposed to do, and they have a bunch of fun colors as well. And lastly, I have these Iconic London Luster Lip Oils. I will say that you don't need all of these shades here because they're all quite sheer so they won't differentiate on your lips at all. See this more red color gives just a subtle like little tint that won't super show up on your lips. They're very sheer but the actual texture of them is so nice and they smell like uh, a freezy. Oh yeah, this is my childhood every summer at the lake. Freezies every day. It's incredible. It smells so good and the texture is lovely. I'm going to put this shade on right now. I use the shade Queen B. It just gives a very similar vibe to the Tower 28 glosses, but the lip oil version. So it's even more glidey. 
It gives a really nice glass effect to your lips, fills in those lines, makes your lips look extra juicy. It's just really fun to rub your lips together when this is on. It's so soft. And my lips are so chapped right now, so it's just nice to have slippery lips. <laughs> Ew! But yes, lovely. I, I've been using these all the now time. Now let's move on to my liked category. I'm going to start off with the Rare Beauty Eyeshadow Primer. I actually quite enjoy this one. It's not as long wearing as my Fenty Beauty one. My Fenty Beauty one, I never have any creasing problems or anything like that. I did encounter a few times that my eyeshadow creased with this one, but it was very, very minimal creasing. I really like this one because it has a tint to it, so it does slightly correct your eyelids, and I've been looking for one that does that without looking cakey or texture enhancing. It feels really similar to the Fenty Beauty one, it's just less waxy. So I'm going to for sure keep this one around, especially for the days if I'm doing a more natural look and I want an overall corrected vibe. But it's in this section just because I have encountered some slight creasing. Continuing with Rare Beauty, they launched this eyeshadow palette this month. This is the True To Myself Discovery Palette and it looks like the phases of the moon here. When I first saw this online, I wasn't sure about it. I thought the color scheme of this palette didn't really work together just to my eyes, but I was surprised when I actually was using it that all the colors actually <laughs> worked together really nicely. It didn't create any muddy colors at all. They all just blended into one another seamlessly. The quality of the actual shadows in here are really good. I didn't experience any patchiness issues. They layered on top of each other really nicely without creating any irregularities or anything like that. The shimmers are really nice as well. They're not the most impactful. They give me more of an everyday vibe, but they're still on the fun side. And this pressed glitter topper shadow in the middle here actually adheres to your eyelid really, really nicely and it is quite beautiful. But now talking about my personal tastes, these are not my go-to tones on an everyday basis, so I feel like this one isn't going to be as loved as some other eyeshadow palettes in my collection, but if these are your colors, like go for it. I don't think you're going to be disappointed in this palette at all. I think it's a really fun one. The tones all complement each other on the actual eyes beautifully. This is for sure a personal preference thing. Next up here, I have the Iconic London Sheer Blushes. I really enjoy these. These really remind me of the M Cosmetics Serum Blushes, but these ones actually set down a bit. So these ones are more long wearing. There's just something there for me that's missing. I can't pinpoint why, but these don't give me that spark of excitement that other blushes do. Although I still really like the formula and whenever I use them, I'm really, really happy with the outcome. There's just something stopping me from completely loving them, if that makes any sense. They're stunning, they're user-friendly, they work really nicely. I will be keeping them. They're just not an all-time favorite. Moving along, I have a setting spray here. This is the Blue Light Filter Protect and Set Mist from Ilia. This one I do enjoy. Something about the scent of it kind of smells medicinal. It has like a lavender scent and this medicine scent in, in one that I'm not a super fan of, but it does set your makeup quite nicely. And the mister is also really nice. It kind of has like a continuation. I just sprayed my oats, but look at that mist. So nice. I missed. I missed with the mist. I will be keeping this one around, but I do prefer the Charlotte Tilbury setting spray as well as the milk one a lot more. I find that those ones really adhere your makeup onto your face all day, whereas this one it just is like kind of a hydrating and like a nice feeling mist that also sets in the same way, but it's not as hardcore, I guess. It has a really nice atomizer. It's just the scent, I think, that's keeping me away from this product. Next up, I have the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder No Powder. I really, really enjoy this. This has been the only powder I've been using for the last couple of weeks. It truly looks like no powder on your skin at all which that's what I love the most about it. I just don't like this one as much as the Charlotte Tilbury ones or the Pat McGrath ones. Those ones are very, very blurring. This one doesn't blur your skin as much. There is a little bit of a blurring property, but it just mostly sets your makeup without looking like your makeup is set, which is really interesting. I still really love this product. I think I'm going to use it on the weekly. It's just not as much as a favorite as the Charlotte Tilbury one and the Pat McGrath ones. In one of my videos, I did say that it kind of hard panned, 
but it kind of disappeared. Like there's no more hard panning at all on here. I think it hard panned just because I was wearing a really dewy foundation and I double dipped my brush into the powder and like whatever wetness from the foundation kind of got on top of the powder, which would happen with any powder. I haven't had that issue since that one video. So that is a relief. So the last product in this category is the Danessa Myricks Beauty Duet Highlighting Facial Balm. You guys know I'm not a super fan of highlighting balms myself, but this one is really interesting. All the ones I've tried in the past have been really, really sticky and you can just feel it on your cheeks. Whereas this one is so thin, it doesn't leave a gloopy texture on your cheeks at all. Like I'm feeling it on my fingers right now and on my hand and it just feels dry which is so interesting, but it looks so glossy. This shade right here is Morning Dew, and it does have a pearl running through it, but this is such an interesting face balm. Like, it's actually one that I see myself using if I want that more artistic, glossy glow. I've never experienced a face balm like this one at all. But with that being said, I don't see myself wearing this like on an everyday basis. It's just been the best highlighting balm that I've tried in my makeup career. So that is all for my liked category. Now let's move on to my disappointments and products that were just simply unremarkable to me. Let's start off with this one. This is the Tatcha the Silk Powder. This one did not work for me at all. It's almost like this powder has a wetness to it, if that makes any sense. It's like the humidity got it. When I open it, you can see that the powder is very stuck together and clumpy, and that's a good indicator that it's not going to work out for me. Every powder that I've tried like this always resulted in a really cakey mess on my face. So this one here was very texture enhancing. It looked super cakey. Even if I use such a tiny amount, it always made my makeup look very obvious. This powder pretty much did the opposite of anything I would want a powder to do. It didn't really set my makeup properly as well. Like my natural oils just seeped right through it. And under my eyes, my concealer would just crease automatically. It's just too heavy and too wet. I know what they were going for, but it just did not work out for me. This sadly was a fail, but the packaging is so pretty. I usually get along with so many Tatcha products, but here we are, a big no for me. Moving on, I have the Milk Makeup Electric Glossy Lip Plumpers. I tried to like these a couple times. The only thing I like about these is the smell. It smells so good to me. Pine trees, eucalyptus, I don't know what it is, but it smells so good. But these are not good at all. <laughs> you guys saw in one of my videos, I tried it again just to plump up my lips. It didn't do much plumping. It just did that foamy stringy thing, which is so gross. I'm also just over this kind of applicator for any kind of glosses. I find that it applies them in a really weird manner. It just creates for a very uneven application and you kind of have to chase the product around to spread it evenly. And it just takes a lot more time than it should. I would completely pass on those. They're very sticky, they're hard to apply, and they don't do much plumping. Moving along, these are the Coach Glosses, and you guys know that these were a ginormous fail. The stoppers on here are really, really bad. <laughs> Every time I start saying something about this gloss, the thing happens. I just was talking about the stopper, and there she is. The stopper came out with with the wand. They cut any corner they could with this collection. Like this whole collection really reminded me of kids makeup when I actually held the products in hand. Yeah, like see, I, I took this wand out and it was fine the first time, then I dunked back in and the stopper didn't do its job. And that happens with each and every one of them. Even if the stopper wasn't an issue with these glosses, the doe foot is very, very stiff and it doesn't allow you to pick up much product and you have to dunk the wand back into the tube a lot of times to get a nice application of the gloss and the actual texture of the gloss is super sticky and just the quality isn't there at all. So these were another huge fail for me. I see what Coach is trying to do and I appreciate it. It's just they kind of missed the mark. Next up, I have these from MAC. They're the Glow Play lip balms. They're tinted lip balms. And these right here are pretty good. I wouldn't 
go as far to say that they're bad in any way. They just don't give me the spark or I don't find them to be any different from other formulas just like this. And there are so many drugstore options that are more impactful in a way than this one. To me, I just know that these are going to kind of rest in my collection without much use. So I don't know, these are just okay to me. Moving on, this is part of the Charlotte Tilbury brow collection she launched. This is the product that I was hoping to be similar to the M Cosmetics brow cream. It has a very similar brush, but this one honestly didn't perform as good as the M Cosmetics one. It just kind of tinted the brows, but it didn't offer any hold or anything like that. And I just enjoy the effect of the M Cosmetics version like a hundred times more than this one. Next up, I have another eyeliner from Makeup by Mario. This is the Master Matte Liquid Liner. This eyeliner is a felt tip, and I don't get along with that as much as a brush tip. I always find that felt tips don't last as long. The thing I really liked about this one is that it has a really matte finish, but there also is a problem with that because it applies really nicely on the first eye, but when you get to your second eye, the product that's actually on the felt tip itself starts to dry already, so you get a really skippy, hard application. It's just not very user-friendly. I took so much time trying to create a nice little wing with this and it just took way longer than it should have. I would pass on this one. What's missing for me is that little mechanical thing inside most of these types of products that you can shake so more of the liquid dispenses. If this liner had that, I feel like it would be more successful. It just kind of missed the mark for me. But there we have it. There is my lengthy April roundup. I really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful. If you did, please give this video a like. It would help me out so very much. I'll make sure to link all of these products in the description down below as always, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Love you. Bye.